business venture. But, um, you know, the Lord really just demands that we, you know, if I were to do something like that, I would get gobbled. They would just, I, I, I wouldn't make it, you know, I, I'd la unless I'm a eyes of the Lord, you know, because of just, you know, because of the way it is. I mean, the Lord separated me from the world completely because he knew that I wouldn't last two seconds. I remember I was on a, I, I was uh, still a photographer on a, on a film shoot and I just couldn't believe how vicious they were. They just all turned on me. It was almost like they did the film in order so they could get me. It was like that kind of gang stalking where everyone on the film set turned on me. And I said, I'm just here because I'm trying to help the guy out. It's his first movie and I'm trying to like take stills for him that I'm going to give him for free. I'm offering my services. And then they started in making all the, it was so scary. And thank God I could just go out to my truck and leave. What if I was a hired hand and I was stuck there? I would have, I don't know, I, maybe I would have been killed. I, you can't, you know, I mean, it's, it's just, I don't know why I have those experiences. And other people look at me and they go, those are all broken relationships because you're, you know, they, they all like to say, go back to your, you're psychologically unstable, you're damaged, you have personality disorder or whatever. And that's why all this stuff had, not because there's some um, dimensional, you know, um, gang stalking, external thing going on. It's all from you. You're doing it. I'm like, I go there with nothing but love in my heart. And then they all just do what they do. And I'm, I'm always amazed at it. And I'm like, well, what is this going to do? Well, consequently, here's what happened. Of course, the guy went out of business. And they all went out of business. And the church that it was affiliated with, they went out of business. You know, I mean, that's basically where all that stuff ends up. But they were all, you know, were they all possessed at the same time because I was kind of stuck there you know I was stuck out on this uh you know the set was some house out in the valley somewhere and I'd like like he'd do a setup you know and then you know he'd be you know the actors would be ready to go and they had a couple of lights and they had a, they were doing it with a with a uh hd uh video shoot and uh, there's nothing wrong with that you know what I mean no one does film anymore but it's uh yeah, except for Quentin Tarantino but I'm you know this is just a little demo of what the guy could do you know and I was just taking pictures of the setup of the director you know of you know you know what you've been on well you probably haven't been on a set but if you if you look at video of a setter you'll see there's a still photographer wandering around getting pictures of the cast and they they don't need to work every day they just they just need to be there for like you know uh, enough time so they can get different stills because the press needs those, you know, usually it's for like, if there's famous actors there and they have different, you know, they, they have a light box. They can choose photos to use in their, in their publicity. Um, it's kind of a nice job because you don't really, you kind of get to wander around and do your own thing. You know what I mean? As long as you could produce the results. It's a job that I thought I could do because you work alone. No one's telling you what to do. The directors are directing you. It just seemed perfect for me. You know, I just go out there and, but uh, it just, it's just got, it was like, wow, it's like that. You know, it just, it just was, it just got like that. It's just, you know, when you've been completely freaked out in the Walmart parking lot and they're all like the zombies are coming your way, right? And they're, they're all triangulating around you. And you know that it's, you couldn't explain it to anybody. They would never believe it. Right, they would never believe it in a million years. Right, it just makes you look nuts. So, just like everybody else, I shut my mouth because if I tried to explain it, it makes me look crazy. And I already had enough trouble, you know, with people, and 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 with that, I didn't want to draw, you know, undue attention to myself. So I just kind of, you know, I'd go home, and I'd sort of, you know, suffer in silence. You know, pretty much becoming like a lot of people, just, just unable to really deal with. And then, of course, you know, they'll tell you, you're the one that's unable to deal with life. You're the one that's not coping right. You know, and looking for uh, these magical explanations of how it's happening, you know, in some coordinated conspiracy against you is um, is, is obviously, you know, a evidence of some kind of psychological uh problem and that even that comes as persecution right false witness yes and even that jesus says be joyous 
because, you know, but it's been, you know, when you don't know what it is, when it has supernatural components to it, um, when you feel like you've been targeted or singled out and you can't tell anyone because they'll just tell you you're paranoid, go get help. Uh, it's very terrifying and very, and it, and it, it, it's very much puts us alone. We end up being alone. And, um, I can tell you this, there wasn't any coordination from some on high or some agency or something like that in that particular film shoot. There was, um, you know, it just, it just happened like that on its own. It's just like the demand. Okay, here we go again. The set changed, right? My movie set, the Truman show, the set changed. And all these people were not like the ones I met at church because I met them in a church. And they just became the hive mind. They, be, they became this. Uh, I almost thought they were going to start filming porno. Yeah, I know. They're just like the opposite of what they were with how they present themselves. I can see a dirty, foul spirit too, like a dirty pornography spirit among them. You know, like, like in other words, that the whole church thing was just a sham. And then I realized that, you know, this is, uh, this is messed up. I realized that I could not cope even there once my eyes were opened. Before I had been, you know, on movie sets and done things and nothing like that ever happened, you know, but then all of a sudden, you know, once I started really, once the Lord took me and he set me on his mission and he showed me the whole story, he showed me myself and we started down that journey. The minute I started giving, having a gift of a word of knowledge, a word of prophecy, accurate prophecy regarding other people and myself and things that were uncovered from the past. And things like that. Um, that's when a lot of this, like anywhere you'd go, it'd become a gang stalking event. Wherever you go, every, everyone would just organize in the hive mind coming at you. But it was since really proclaiming Jesus Christ, that's when it really went full bonkers. And the enemy was always, you know, the worst enemy were Christians. The most perverted ones were the Christians. The most murderous ones were the Christians. The most lying pieces of shit were the Christians. Yeah, so that was an S-bomb. So I said it was going to be explicit. I always say explicit in case that, well, that's the, you know, that's the right word. P-O-S, that's the right word. Sorry. When you see someone that's proclaiming Jesus and they're, and they're, and they're, uh, have the spirit of lying, you know, they're doing that on purpose. They're, they're just basically more unrepentant and more sin than ever before they hit that church, before they ever made a public, uh, had a public baptism, before they ever, uh, you know, gave public testimony. They were better when they were alcoholics. They were better when they were, or whatever, they were criminals, alcoholics, I don't care what it was, better when they were prostitutes than when they got in there. That turned them into 1,000% liars, murderous liars, roaming the world looking for whom they can harm, looking for anyone living looking for anyone that's truly of the Lord to slay them. Don't think that lesson was easy for me to learn. That was not easy for me to learn. That took a long time to accept. Once I did, though, I could start the work of forgiveness. In other words, that's the way they're always going to act because they're, they're beholden to Satan, right? The church indoctrinates them. They do the very opposite thing with these people as what they're supposed to be doing. Ironically, they're going to be the tribulation saints. God's going to give them a chance to prove themselves unto death. But for others, they're going to get out of here. They're going to be translated out. No, not, not, uh, not before anything. No, there's going to be, there's been hard times already. There's been, you know, the United States is hunting down Christians in uh, the Middle East via their, 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 their beloved uh, uh, ISIS, which is the, um, lovely creation of the West, of the United States and other countries. I don't even talk about that anymore because it just se seems that, uh, gosh, if you, if you don't know that much, what good is it me repeating it? You're never going to get it. There are people that just refuse to see what this world is. There are people that just refuse to admit that, you know, we torture people, we kill people, we behead people. We do, we do all those, that, that persecution of Christians and beheading of Christians and, and setting Christians up is alive and well everywhere and all through America as well. 
the real police on Christians are people that are other Christians in name only.